So eternal life has brought us what? Agelessness. Number two, it brings us what? I got to show it to you. I got to show it to you. All right. Ah, you can go to Isaiah chapter 54. Let's begin from verse 14. And we'll look at 15. In righteousness shall thou be established. <laughs> this is interesting because we already got it. In righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear. And from terror. For it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together. But not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Now look at verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Who, where does that take you? Into fearlessness. Amen. Eternal life brings you what? Fearlessness. Fearlessness. Whew. Let me show you some. Proverbs chapter 12. From verse 28. Because this one gives you something. In the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death. I told you. In the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, what pathway are you walking in? A lot of people were walking in another pathway. But if you walk in the pathway of righteousness, it says, in the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death. This righteousness that we have, because of eternal life, brings us what? Deathlessness. Yes. Now there's a difference between agelessness and deathlessness. You know, man is born and he has a life that's determined from the womb to the tomb. And uh, there's so many things that happen in his life, it's all about death. Always the tendency to die is what he keeps fighting all his long life. He's fighting death. It's like fire. You know, when you, when, you, when you have fire in a place, the tendency of fire is to quench. Because fire consumes its source. Fire, in other words, can be said to hate its source. It kills its source. And so if you were to leave fire, it will consume its source and be extinguished. Because it cannot continue. It destroys its source. So the only way to sustain fire is to give it more material. The more you feed it, it stays alive, keeps burning. Stays alive, keeps burning. Man and death are that way. From the day he's born, death sets in. The tendency is to die. So he's feeding. You keep giving him food. You keep trying to keep him alive. He has to drink water. He has to eat. If he doesn't eat, he's going to die. If he doesn't drink, he's going to die. So you keep doing everything to keep him alive. All his life, you keep keeping him alive. You keep keeping him alive. Because there's death. He, he, he inherited a curse. Death. But when you're born again, and you have the life and nature of God in you, things change. Your life is not having the tendency of death. No. Deathlessness. You have to understand this. Deathlessness. 
Look at Mark chapter 16, verse 18, for example. What did Jesus say? Look at it. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Why did Jesus say that? How can you drink a deadly thing? He already called it deadly. He says if you drink something that kills, it will not hurt you. He called it deadly, meaning it's supposed to kill. And Jesus said, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. Why? Because of eternal life. Eternal life. The church has not majored on eternal life because most have never understood it. When you have the consciousness of eternal life, everything about your life changes. Your thinking, your perspective in life. You are distinguished. You are separated from others. Listen, we're a different class of beings. We're not ordinary beings. We that are born again, we're different. You have to know it. We're different. And it's about time we let God's people know they have eternal life. I want you to go to 1 John chapter 5, and let's read from the, um, maybe from the NIV, we can read verse 13. I want to show it to you. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Did you see that? He said, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. He wants you to know that you have eternal life. He wants you to know. Because if you don't know, you never take advantage of it. You have to know that you have eternal life. And that this life is ageless, it's fearless, and it's deathless. It's deathless. Death is failure brought into a system. He's saying there's no failure in your system. No heart failure, no kidney failure, nothing like that. Because you have eternal life in you. Manto Karabagata says. You have eternal life. Your systems don't fail. Listen, he says, give yourself to them. He says, meditate upon these things. Give yourself to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Meditate on these things. The word of God was given to us to live by. This is your life. Meditate on it. 